Calcium is by far the most abundant mineral in the body, more, more than all the other minerals added together. And it's the only nutrient in the body for which there's an endocrine gland tasked exclusively to its management, which is the parathyroid gland. And the optimal calcium phosphorus ratio was determined to be about 10 to 4, or a 2.5 ratio of calcium to phosphorus by the great late Dr. Melvin Page. And you want to check that ratio on your blood test. You want to see, you want about two and a half times as much calcium as phosphorus. I was just asked the other day by someone new to us if I was the forbidden doctor. Of course I said no. The forbidden doctor is not me at all. We are not the forbidden doctor. Jack is not the forbidden doctor. It's in you. The forbidden doctor is that magical, mystical power inside of you that is controlling and healing you. It's that beautiful, marvelous, almost miraculous force that controls all healing. It's that innate intelligence, that life force directed influence that triggered your DNA to guide the building of your body after conception. Yeah, it's that power that sustains your life, repairs your wounds and lesions, and it never stops working. It's that essential part of you that keeps you alive and heals your every hurt. This is the Forbidden Doctor. It's not me. It's that part of you. The powers that be have decreed forbidden to ever learn about or even consider and never ever rely upon. For it is forbidden that you even know this life force exists at all. You are your own forbidden doctor. Yes. Hey, everybody, it's Dr. Jack. And ah, Mary had a family emergency. She's uh, away from me for just a little bit. So she asked that I go ahead so we at least maintain some schedule. Do the Forbidden Doctor this week by myself. I know she will be missed. But welcome back to the Forbidden Doctor podcast. This is podcast episode 192, Notes from the Forbidden Doctor. We get asked to go over these pearls from time to time. And so I'm going to talk about some of the forbidden stuff that's involved with normal healing processes inside the body that have just been dismissed as, well, you know, you're going to need to take something in the way of a drug or some stimulant, when in fact, a little better nutritional choices can make a world of difference. Now, we've got some great news about our website, ForbiddenDoctor.com. We've just opened up to the world with our 600 plus symptom protocols. In other words... If you have, well, let's say uh, um, gallbladder pain and you're embarrassed or you don't want to tell anybody or you choose to not go to a doctor, uh, you're also, you know, it's, you don't even have to do any of that because of our free symptom survey. You can just simply search for our, our uh, gallbladder support program at our website, ForbiddenDoctor.com. It's simple. You just click in the upper left search field of our website and discreetly read about it and purchase the protocol if that's what you're looking for in one easy swoop. And when you join our new $29 VIP membership, you can get the um, gallbladder protocol as well as others for 20% off. And you'll not find lower prices for standard processed products anywhere. You'll also get free shipping if it's over $100 and very discreet HIPAA texting capabilities right to me. I'll answer the text or Mary will or our nutritionist will if you prefer. It's your choice. And understand we'll text you an answer to your questions quickly during business hours. You can text us 24-7 because, well, we've been known to answer text questions at all hours of the night and weekends. You know, just saying. We don't guarantee quick uh, response after hours, but during business hours, for sure, we can get back to you much sooner. So go to ForbiddenDoctor.com slash VIP or on our homepage of our website, click the box for VIP membership to learn more. Now, we are constantly asked, as you might imagine, a myriad of questions all the time. Same for any of you professionals out there that are, have a particular expertise. People are always asking you questions all the time. Well, some are very important in that they apply to many people. So from time to time, we dedicate a podcast to answering those questions. So we're going to be talking about hot flashes, uh, turmeric and black pepper, bone support as we age, liver spots, sardines as a calcium source, what rebuilds cartilage, bone fracture versus bone regeneration, liver support, ringing in the ears, and how to help the body to better use calcium um, 
How do we absorb calcium without creating an excess as there are different forms, of course? And how about um, how about a protocol for athletes before an event or a game that is completely legal? Uh, Protocol for strep pathogen. Um, Is there something a pregnant woman can take if she has to get a flu shot? I mean, if she's in a job uh, requirement to get a flu shot. Is there something she can do? Yeah. Now, is that enough? I think so. So I hope we can get through all of this. So the first question that um, comes up, and we often see this, why do you use proline iodine for hot flashes? Good question. Iodine helps the thyroid gland recover at this point, you know, po- usually postmenopausal, in responding to the loss of estrogen from the ovaries following menopause. Now, the ovaries... Uh, as you go through menopause, it's not that the ovaries are dying. They're, they're not shrinking up into some shriveled thing. They're still vital. In fact, uh, we have a podcast, Your Marvelous Ovaries, that talks about this. It's just that ovarian function decreases to the point where ovulation stops so that during this period of time, you can still enjoy that close sexual relationship with your significant other and not worry about getting pregnant. You know, your, your days of raising children are probably slowing down, and now you're going to be taking care of grandchildren. You don't have time to get pregnant again. So Mother Nature has slowed down the um, estrogen uh, um, release from the ovaries, and the thyroid helps, and the, the adrenal glands will pick it up because the, agre- the adrenals recognize under the influence of the hypothalamus that there is a slowing down of the uh, manufacturing of estrogen by the ovaries, and so the adrenals will pick it up. And the adrenals will only produce a very limited amount of estrogen, and so the thyroid um, spends an awful lot of time getting the adrenals to help that out. And so what's going on, we are giving the thyroid iodine because it's, it's a compensatory adaptation to the loss of the ovarian hormone production. Because thyroxin, T4, you know, the major form of, uh, well, T3 and T4, but T4 in particular, is 65% by weight iodine. And we find out that when we help the thyroid, help the adrenals, help the ovaries, the hot flashes disappear. Another question. Why do most commercial turmeric supplements utilize black pepper as an adjunctive? What's the nutritional value of black pepper? You know, there's some minerals in it, a couple of uh, small amounts of vitamins. But apparently it was believed, and it's been, you know, echoed through the uh, Internet echo chamber out there, that somehow black pepper, the pepperine aspect of black pepper, significantly enhances the absorption of curcumin. Well, we have been able to obtain an awful lot of research uh, from our mentors in Australia with Mediherb, and who, who offered a... Um, Brilliant presentation on turmeric and curcumin, explaining how actual curcumin with black pepper absorption trials done with human beings were grossly overstated and marginal at best. It's just one of those things that keeps echoing like a ping pong table back and forth out there on the Internet. People think it's been there long enough there has some uh, viability to it, but not compared to the blending of fenugreek seed with high-grade turmeric which does increase curcumin uptake by a factor of 25 times. And the gold standard randomized double-blind crossover study, the scientific trials verified this fact. Uh, in, med- in molecular pharmacology, in uh, 2007, there was a big article about it as well. And in, um, what's this other magazine that I'm looking at? Journal of Functional Foods. In uh, 2016, both of these did crossover randomized double-blind studies and found out when curcumin is coupled with fenugreek, amazing things happen. And that's why we recommend turmeric forte. You can get it on the website um, because it's such a powerful combination of turmeric and fenugreek. All right, another question. Parents who develop failure to thrive after cancer treatments with inability to maintain proper, proper weight, what do you suggest? Yeah, you know, if you, especially if you survived um, chemotherapy. Uh, chemotherapy just rack, wreaks absolute havoc on the human body. And if you are able to survive it and the cancer is in remission, hopefully at this point in your life, Uh, There are some things that you can do because at this point, failure to thrive is because of the kidney damage, the liver damage, the heart damage, 
damage to the gastrointestinal system. Remember, uh, chemotherapy isn't just specific to a cancer cell. They're very oxidative. They're, they're extremely powerful oxidative chemicals and damage anything they come in contact with. And it's possible to have enough organ damage as a result of this that um, um, they don't function correctly and failure to thrive shows up. So what do we recommend? We recommend something called Super EFF, about six a day of those. Simplex F or M, about six a day of those on an empty stomach. And lactic acid yeast wafers, about three a day. Why? Because these are very powerful supports nutritionally to help to repair tissue that's been damaged because of the um, chemotherapy chemicals. Super EFF, Simplex FRM, depending on male or female, and lactic acid yeast wafers. Um, we have seen great recovery. In fact, those things work very good with central nervous system degenerative problems, especially multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's. Okay, how do you address, as we age, hyperpigmentation, as in aging, liver spots, cherry angiomas? Cherry angiomas are just a sign of uh, capillary fragility and overgrowth of these micro blood vessels in the affected area. You can strengthen blood vessels to seal the capillaries by using Cyruta Plus that's just loaded with brutin or something called Easy MG. We call it Easy Mag. Again, from standard process, Cyruta Plus and Easy Mag. These so-called liver spots are actually something referred to medically as solar lentigo. They're just harmless patches of darkened skin that results from overexposure to solar UV rays. And it causes <clears throat> local proliferation of uh, the melanocytes and the accumulation of melanin within the skin cells. And they're also known as age spots and senile freckles and there's some other things. But generally speaking, Cataplex F tablets drive calcium into the tissue and the skin and thereby provides a, um, a more solar resistant uh, epidermal and dermal layer, you know, the outer and the inner layers of your skin to be a lot stronger with less, less fragility to the skin. And that is why individuals who historically quickly sunburn become such proponents of Cataplex F tablets because their skin uh, ultraviolet tolerance increases. Another question, are the bones of sardines, since they're, they're cooked, calcium carbonate? Well, good quality canned sardines are either smoked or steamed, and they do that, of course, to soften the bones, and dried and then salted, and, but, but even with all that, the calcium uh, remains highly usable. But the cooked or deep-fried sardines are mushy, and they lack firm definition, and you can't get them out of the can without crushing them. And I don't consider them a viable whole protein food by the time they're cooked that much. They should be uh, avoided in, flavor, in favor of the smoked or the steamed. And I personally like the smoked ones. My personal course is wild planet, wild sardines, and extra virgin olive oil, lightly smoked. But it's a great source of calcium and a great source of some uh, important oils. Now, what's the makeup of cartilage? Now, people usually ask, what's the makeup of bone? What rebuilds cartilage? Well, cartilage is a collagen protein that's strengthened by minerals like manganese. And collagen has rightly been described as the intercellular cement, the glue that holds the body together. And scurvy is just literally the degeneration and the non-replacement of the older, worn-out collagen. Because all collagen tissues are formed by the action of the vitamin C complex acting upon amino acids. Now I'm talking about whole food vitamin C. I'm not talking about amino or uh, ascorbic acid. And cataplex C and whole protein supplements like calcifood or protofood is the most direct path to collagen repair and replacement. And where does manganese come in? Well, it adds toughness and flex to the cartilage. It allows the cartilage to have a certain f flexibility to it so that it's not so rigid and firm. So I always recommend Ligaplex 1 or Manganese B12 or Trace Minerals B12. They're very rich sources of this Trace Mineral Manganese that it, your ligaments depend upon. Uh, vaccine question that uh, I often get, do vaccines create uh, a cycle of antibodies? Well, that's the, that's the entire premise of a vaccine. 
Uh, the measurement of these antibodies created by the vaccine in the blood is called a titer. So when someone is, have you been vaccinated for such and such? Well, you look to see if there's a titer in the bloodstream for that particular vaccine or that particular antibody. And that will tell you whether or not that vaccination has occurred. Now, without any further discussion of vaccines, I'll just leave that at that. But that's, that's you know, yes, it, they do create antibodies. That's the whole premise behind the idea of getting a vaccine. All right, another question. If a fracture can heal within six weeks, why do bones take so long to regenerate? Now, as an upper cervical doctor, often with uh, x-rays, I can see a lot of... Um, Bone loss. You know, if somebody comes in with a broken bone, I can see that on x-ray too, and broken bones can heal rather, rather quickly. Uh, they're designed to heal very quickly. Usually it's about a six to eight week process, but bone degeneration where the bone matrix has simply disappeared um, for whatever reason, that takes a lot longer. And, and when you study the cells of the bone... The average lifespan of an osteoclast is about 12 days. And an osteoclast is a cell that your body makes to dissolve bone because your bones are constantly turning over. They're dynamic. They're not uh, firm and stationary like the, the wood framing of your house. doesn't get thicker or less, you know, unless you've got termites. But other than that, it stays a pretty firm um, framework. Your bones only stay the way they are when you place demand upon the bone, which is getting up and moving around. Sedentary lifestyle and certain dietary nutritional um, losses will cause bone to waste away. Uh, resistance exercise, jogging, th these kinds of things will cause more bone to be deposited or more matrix to be deposited. So an osteoclast's lifespan is only about 12 days because it's constantly resorbing bone that will be replaced by osteoblasts that will synthesize the bone matrix. So the osteoclast dissolves bone, the osteoblast makes bone. And osteocytes which comprise about 95% of the total bone cells, are the most abundant, abundant and the long-lived cells in the body, and under normal circumstances can have a lifespan of up to 25 years. And since human bone's about, what, a third water, a third mineral, a third protein, the formation of bone is quicker um, from a fracture than the maturation of bone over time. So, you know, you have, say, like you had a 13-year-old a, a just barely teenage girl who uh, um, wrecks her bike or falls off the balancing beam or whatever else and breaks her arm. The amount of time that will be necessary for the full maturation of the bone cells in her body is going to go on another two, three, four years. But that broken bone can come back together in as little as six weeks. So, you know, it's called the six-week factor. And once that collagen protein matrix is formed, the body quickly, tightly packs all the available minerals that it can for that fracture for hardness and compression strength into that collagen matrix that is re-knitting broken bone. Now, archaeologists, you know, regularly find human bones and teeth that are thousands of years old, but they don't find other tissues. Rarely do they find other human tissue besides bone. And that surviving ancient bone, of course, is now desiccated. So it consists only of the minerals. The, the, the water is the one third water in the bone is now gone. And it's and it consists only of the minerals packed tightly into the, you know, the now calcified collagen protein matrix. It's very similar to petrified wood. Same kind of process. Okay, another question. Is it okay to take standard process supplements without food? Well, not all supplements should be taken on an empty stomach. You know, Zypan and uh, betaine hydrochloride, for instance, should be taken with or after food. I mean, why would uh, hydrochloric and pepsin be active in an empty stomach? And that's, that's what those two things do for you. Some supplements have been found to be better tolerated with food. Things like Cyruta, Cyruta Plus, Lycoplex 1 and 2 are better taken with food. Uh, other than, you know, personal tolerance and hydrochloric acid, most supplements are fine on an empty stomach. 
Uh, bowel tolerance to magnesium is higher when you take it with food. Colacol, which is uh, frozen ox bile to help you with fat uh, digestion, uh, taken on an empty stomach, not surprisingly, can produce things like nausea and loose stool, so we want to take colacol with food. Fast food liquid is best on an empty stomach because it's likely that whatever food is currently in the gut has some calcium in it. And phosphorus has a very high propensity to bond with calcium forming calcium phosphate, which is such a, has a, such a tight union that can only be used by bone. You know, maybe the cells wanted to use the phosphorus to make ATP, adenosine triphosphate, the gasoline of the body. Or the bloodstream wanted to use the calcium to make ionized calcium, calcium bicarbonate, for use somewhere else in the body. But when you get these two things together, you form calcium phosphate that cannot become ATP, and it cannot become ionized calcium. You can't take them apart. That's why the body says, oh, calcium phosphate, I know where you belong. And it goes straight to bone. And the more so, the more we understand the nature and the properties and the propensity of nutrients, the more strategically we can use them in a targeted way to achieve better therapeutic results. And speaking of that, uh, the liver often comes into our discussion because some, sometimes we recommend a product called beta food uh, that thins the bile, or we recommend milk thistle, which is silymarin, the, the herb silymarin, that, that stimulates the production of bile in the liver. So they can be used together, actually, I usually recommend them together, the beta food, to lower the viscosity of the bile so the bile flows freely and is able to emulsify the fats in your food. And the milk, and then stimulate the liver to make more bile, we use um, milk thistle. And it's sometimes wise to use beta food, you know, for a few days to thin the bile and get it flowing before you start the milk thistle. And with the bile flowing, they work very well simultaneously, but we want to get that bile flowing. Remember, gallstones are made up of cholesterol that's in the bile. And the bile is one, it's not designed just for fat oxidation in your foods. It's also designed as a way to get toxins out of the body, out through the colon. And uh, high carb, high sugar diets have a tendency to make the bile very sluggish, very thick, like honey. Should be running like water. And that's what the uh, beta food does. So then how long would you take milk thistle once you started that? I'm not aware of a time limit. You know, one measure is normal bile flow is determined by stool consistency. You know, is it hard? Is it soft? Is it watery? Do you get nauseous after you eat? I mean, there should be no stressful reaction to consuming a quality high-fat food like butter or eggs or nuts or meat or very fatty fish. When you digest fat comfortably. The milk thistle and the beta food have done their job and, and the work is over. The work is done. But that's the thing you go by. Can you digest fat comfortably without a lot of belching, without a lot of stomach cramps, and without a lot of uh, bowel gas? Another question, will magnesium help with tinnitus? Well, the kind of tinnitus or tinnitus associated with noise-induced hearing loss is responsive to magnesium. We've, we've found that to be the case. Not so much in other cases, but, you know, we, I, I'm asked questions about magnesium all the time, like magnesium is some dominant mineral in the body. It's important. You, 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 uh, uh, there are enzymes that require it. There's other things in the body that require magnesium, but magnesium can become toxic. That's one of the reasons why a lot of lactives, laxatives are magnesium-based because the body wants to get rid of it. And where's it gonna get rid of it? It's gonna get rid of it with a watery solution out the bowel. So that's why it's usually um, used in uh, conditions of um, constipation. But little bits of magnesium are absolutely essential. And so if you have a hearing loss due to noise-induced problems, your workplace or, or whatever else, you are around constantly loud noises and I wonder sometimes about these uh, kids that are watching their video games with headphones. Magnesium has been shown to, or tinnitus has been shown to be responsive to magnesium in those kinds of, of uh, conditions. Tinnitus can result from a number of issues, ranging from quite a list of prescribed drugs as a side effect to just the misalignment of your, of your mandible, of your jawbone. And stenotic blood vessels, blood vessels that are too narrow, you know, but not fully occluded, just too narrow, 
are often a contributing factor in which uh, we would use Ciruta, we'd use uh, Ginkgo biloba, we'd use Cataplex G, known to be quite helpful for that kind of tinnitus. Now, before I go on, because this may be stimulating some questions of your own that uh, I may not have a chance to answer in this podcast, I want to bring up the free symptom survey that we offer on the homepage at ForbiddenDoctor.com. Now, it's the most comprehensive survey you're ever going to take. It has lots of questions. And after you're done, you have the opportunity to have a free 30-minute phone consultation. And you'll be given a personalized protocol. This saves you money in the long run because you are not taking supplements you don't need. And all of this at no charge to you. When I consult with a new patient, they'll often bring in everything they're taking, and I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, 80 90% of this here you do not need. You, you got it on a whim. You got it for an impulsive thing at checkout. You got it because somebody else talked about it. But you don't need this. That's why we do the symptom survey at ForbiddenDoctor.com. And if you decide to purchase the recommended supplements that we suggest you get based on the results of your symptom survey, you can get them at a 10% discount if you sign up for our text blasts. These text blasts give you fantastic coupons every single week. You just text the word HEALTHY to 41411. And we'll text you back a coupon code that you can use on our website, ForbiddenDoctor.com, when you check out. Or you just call the office, 801-523-1890, and they can help you sign up for the text blasts. And remember, it's your patronage of our offers that keeps this podcast on the, on the air. So as we plow on here, another question, what's an effective way to raise oral pH that remains consistently as 5.8 to 6.2. Now, we have podcasts on the uh, acid, uh, a- a- alkaline, um, base type of uh, argument that's going on out there in the marketplace all the time. The body should be acid, no, the body should be base. Well, I got a podcast that talks about that, but the pH of the mouth fluctuates throughout the day is simply what it is based on uh, mastication, you know, the chewing, uh, the chewing will change the pH of your mouth, drinking, whatever you're drinking, and, and then it will normalize with inactivity. And in any case, a minor transient change of 5.8 to 6.2 is still in, still in the slightly acidic range and of no real, uh, real significance at that point. But on a related point, I want to add a very rare paper um, from Weston A. Price in his discussion of acid-based balance of diets and immunity. And I'm going to quote, I want to be able to quote directly from it here. It's important to note, this is on page three of his uh, work on balance of diets and immunity. It is important to note that in four of these five groups of primitive racial stocks, living on entirely different native foods in wildly divergent climates and entirely different living habits, the immunity-producing diets were found to be higher in acid factors than in alkaline. Now, not many have had the privilege of reading this uh, important contribution. It was delivered in 1934 at a New York dental conference, five years before publishing his seminal work, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. And if you've heard some of our other podcasts, you know that uh, that book is scripture for me. It just simply is. He went around and studied several different groups, totally isolated from one another back in the 20s, 1920s. What's that, almost 100 years ago? And he took a lot of photographs and did an awful lot of investigative work because he wanted to find out what made super healthy people super healthy and what didn't. And, of course, it was diets based on animal foods. Very rich, high-fat animal foods, perfectly formed dental arches, um, uh, uh, reproduction in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Yes, you heard me, 50s, 60s, and 70s in isolated primitive groups. That's not all that bad a thing. You know, 2020 America (laughs) might not fit. (laughs) But it's not so much the idea that having a child, a woman bearing a child in her 50s or 60s, is something probably not culturally accepted, it's that the health of her body was such that she could conceive and produce a beautifully healthy baby in her 60s. And he wanted to go find out why. 
And the, and the interesting thing is it didn't matter which group he went to. He found the same similar character, characteristics among them. And the diets that they ate were higher in the acid-producing factors than base factors. And yet we have this idea that if you're not alkaline, you're going to die. All right, another question. How can you help the body utilize calcium effectively to prevent excess of free calcium? Now, when you do a serum blood a calcium test, you're looking, you're pretty much you're looking at the free calcium in the blood. It's ionized calcium, calcium bicarbonate. And it's the most useful and important form of blood calcium. I mean, it's very responsive to the presence of vitamins D, F, and C. And learning what moves calcium to where it is and where it needs to be delivered in the body is the important lesson here because vitamin C complex will drive calcium into the bones and the teeth. Vitamin D draws and holds calcium into the blood, which if you have too much and you have too high a calcium indicator when you do a blood test, hypercalcemia is what they'll call that, while vitamin F does exactly the opposite. It's just essential fatty acids, especially arachidonic acid. And that drives the ionized calcium from the blood into the tissues and into the cellular fluids. So in general, people tend to get too much vitamin D in proportion to vitamin F. That results in too much calcium trapped in the bloodstream. And this form of hypercalcemia is also uh, related to hypervitaminosis D. And it's a very serious and toxic condition because sunstroke is one of the things that can result from that. Now, it's, it's been convincingly proved that healthy vitamin D3 blood levels will vary widely from race to race among humans. And many are also surprised to learn that vitamin D3 is a widely used rodenticide, a rodent poison, approved by the EPA to kill rodents by just awful, you know, it rapidly creates deadly hypercalcemic blood that shuts down their kidneys and stops their heart. So a few years ago, New Zealand controlled a possum population explosion by using natural vitamin D3, cholecalciferol. And they tacked it to trees wrapped up in the food that the possums wanted. And the advantage being that it did not spread like other poisons up the food chain to raptors and larger mammals, which often is the case with some forms of poison people use around their home for rodents. And then raptors, you know, uh, hawks and whatever, will grab these animals before they're dead and eat them, and then they die because of that poison. Uh, another question, is there a rule of thumb in navigating how to supplement the body to actually absorb calcium without creating an excess? Well, <clears throat> Calcium is by far the most abundant mineral in the body, more, more than all the other minerals added together. And it's the only nutrient in the body for which there's an endocrine gland tasked, tasked exclusively to its management, which is the parathyroid gland. And the optimal calcium phosphorus ratio is determined to be about 10 to 4 or a 2.5 ratio of calcium to phosphorus by the great late Dr. Melvin Page. And you want to check that ratio on your blood test. You want to see, you want about two and a half times as much calcium as phosphorus. Now, vitamin F, the essential fatty acids from animal fats like butter and fish oil, help to control the buildup of calcium in the bloodstream. But the most difficult form of calcium for absorption is calcium carbonate, which is, you know, just a form of limestone or chalk. And mother's milk from all mammals is an optimal form in which the lactic acid that is formed from the lactose in all milk binds with the calcium to form calcium lactate. And this is the most bioavailable and most ionizable of food sources for calcium. Only, only fresh spring water, you know, never heated, uh, contains actual ionized calcium in the form of calcium bicarbonate. Very much different than calcium carbonate is calcium bicarbonate. And this is the most bioavailable calcium of all. Now, the lactate form is only one step change from becoming um, bicarbonate in the blood. Vitamin D draws calcium into the blood. Vitamin F drives calcium from the blood into the tissues. Vitamin C complex drives calcium from the blood into the bones and the teeth, as I said earlier. And without the presence of vitamins, calcium is just dumb as a rock. And it, only, and it obeys only one law, the law of gravity. And so gravity tends to settle calcium into the joints and the blood vessels of the body because it's, it's locked in the blood. 
Sugar has a degrading effect upon calcium, which is why it causes dental caries and osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. Now, with the calcium lactate I'm talking about there, um, should you take calcium lactate? What about calcifood? Or uh, I'm going to mention four standard processed products, calcifood, biodent, cataplex F, and cod liver oil. Well, calcium lactate is a universally great supplement for every age, stage, and phase of life. I once heard uh, the saying, take six per day for life, and then three per day thereafter. That's how important it is. BioDent, we recommend for growing children during all stages of teeth development. That's a strong calcium-carrying supplement. Cataplex F tablets are needed to drive calcium into the tissues during muscle cramps. Best to chew them up. Make a little soup, hold them under your tongue for 30, 40, 50 seconds, maybe a minute, and you'll see the cramp disappear. Cataplex F tablets are part of our triad, triad of immunity. I think it is podcast number three. The healing triad, I think, is what it is, and it, which stimulates the, that cataplex, those essential fatty acids, stimulate phagocytosis through the mobilization of ionized calcium. And phagocytosis, of course, is where the phagocytes do their job, eating up the enemy. Calcifood, another calcium-carrying supplement, it's, it's just raw bone flour in times of bone healing and anti-osteoarthritic protocol. It's, um, it's an excellent general whole protein mineral concentrate for the bones. And you add calcifood powder to a shake or to some cultured milk product, uh, a real whole food value for the whole, whole body, in fact. And calcifood wafers are absolutely craved by dogs. And it makes a great treat or a training reward for them. And then, of course, the last one would be uh, cod liver oil. It's just your routine vitamin A, vitamin D supplementation, particularly in the, in the winter months. And now, let me, uh, just a couple more here. A protocol for athletes. Um, preseason training and the day of the game, the day of the event. Now, the management and utilization of oxygen is at the core, obviously, of, of muscle performance and subsequent athletic achievement and, and recovery. Uh, most of the things that people are doing out there that have been outlawed by the IOC, especially, you know, in the Olympic game itself, um, are designed to provide more oxygen for the heart. Now, in this regard, Cataplex E2, which is a, um, it's a highly dense fat extract from several organs, but it's just a fat. It's a very unique formulation developed by Dr. Royal Lee in 1949, I think. And Dr. Lee described it as the oxygen conservation factor of the blood. And many athletes, including extreme mountain climbers, have used Cataplex E2 for great advantage for endurance, for uh, altitude adaptation and recovery after the event. So six to 12 tablets on the day of the event, before obviously, and three to six during recovery or even prep, and for high altitude oxygen management, about 9 to 12 per day. And this positive effect on muscle fatigue is readily observed in the heart sound recording work that we can do on heart muscle. And additionally, wheat germ oil pearls from Standard Process, about 4 to 6 a day with its high octocosinol um, content, has been used by ath Olympic athletes the world over for many decades. And octoconosol field tests show that it improves endurance, reaction time, and other measures of exercise capability. And because octoconosol is a food found in many foods, but it's, it's a pretty good concentration in wheat germ oil, it's perfectly legal. And um, it's interesting to note, I only recently discovered this, that the largest volume of buyers of wheat germ oil in the world are the owners and trainers of racehorses. And it's typically a daily ration of most racehorses around the world. Historically, vitamin E was, you know, first discovered through research into the pro profound effects of uh, various degenerative things going on in the late 20s and 30s. And um, when they would use fresh whole or uh, wheat germ oil, the researchers found two profoundly important functions associated with it. Number one, an anti-sterility function that promoted fertility in mammals, including humans. 
and um, muscular strength and a repair function that increased tissue resistance to stress. So it had benefits all over the place. Weight germ oil and a cataplexy too. Those two together. If you have an event coming up, you want to load up on these for a week or two ahead of time and the morning of. Perfectly legal foods to increase oxygen availability during your event. Now, um, a couple more, just two more. Can you review protocols for the leaky gut syndrome? We get an awful lot of questions about that. The gut, the walls of the gut leak for the same reason any tissue in the body leaks, because of breakdown and liquefaction of the intercellular cement substance, collagen. You know, just one of the big buzzwords in healthcare today. And it's essentially what's called incipient scurvy. The same thing that causes scurvy in the mouth with the gums can cause scurvy throughout the body, including the heart, where the intracellular cement, the collagen fibers, remember in bone, bone is one-third protein fibers, primarily collagen, holding that bone matrix together. And when you get a breakdown of that collagen, the tissue begins to just open up, you know, like an overused sponge or something. And Cyruta Plus and Cataplex C are your primary, primary formulas for that. About 9 to 12 a day will help to rebuild the walls of the gut, aided by the overall uh, triad of digestion, which would be Zypan, about 2 per meal, Beta Food, about 2 per meal, and Lactic Acid Yeast Wafers, about 3 a day. And uh, for protein, fat, and carbohydrate digestion, respectively. Uh, you know, and I think it's probably essential to add Enzacor and Zymex wafers as well. If Mary was on here with me today, I know she would be bringing up Enzacor and um, Zymex. Absolutely essential to rebuild that gut wall. Let me repeat that. Cyruta Plus and Cataplex C are your primary formulas to build that gut to get it back together. Whether it's the gums the heart tissue, or any other organ that's starting to break down, it could be because a loss of the collagen factor. But it's also the collagen in your skin that is benefited by this. So there's so many collagen products out there uh, from the outside in, rather than giving the body what it needs from the inside out for proper collagen manufacture, the way nature intended, will eat some collagen product. Well, let me tell you something. As soon as that collagen, that high protein density product gets to the stomach, the stomach's going to dissolve it and break it down into peptides and amino acids. Now, if you're lucky, your body will take those amino acids and reform them into collagen somewhere in the body that it's needed, but it may use it for something else. But when you give your body the raw material to build its own collagen, then you're light years ahead. All right, and then I want to finish with one last question. Is there anything a pregnant woman can take if she requires a flu shot? You know, as in, you know, certain professions, nursing, uh, school, teacher, whatever, can often demand you get a flu shot if you're going to work here. That's a very unfortunate choice. But given no way out, if you want to keep your job, that is, I suggest Immuplex. About four to six a day to help the immuno response and recover from the impact of the vaccine. Now, John Courtney developed Immuplex in 1984, 17 years after the passing of Dr. Royal Lee. He was Dr. Lee's right hand for 30 years in research and development and, a, and a, um, a mentor to many people who are involved in nutritional support today. And John Courtney said the following about the formulary basis of Immuplex. And if you've been listening to Mary's and my recent podcasts on coronavirus or uh, what to do if uh, before, during, and after the flu and some of these other type of immune-dependent things we run across, we often talk about Immuplex. This is what John Courtney said. The human body does not have a single immune system as it is better described as an immune alliance among various systems and organs which then coordinated by the brain give an immune response to the presence of disease-associated factors such as certain bacteria or virus. The immune alliance is composed of the thymus for the endocrine, for T lymphocyte cells, the, the T cells, spleen for antibodies, lymphatic and homopoietic 
hemopoietic is the, uh, the building of red blood cells. Long bones for the leukocytes, the skeletal, you know, the skeletal system, the stomach digestive system. Uh, it has HCL in it to destroy ingested parasites. It has intestinal flora to strengthen the digestive system. That can destroy the pathogenic uh, microbes and the fungi, and and manufacture vitamin B12 as well. It has uh, liver parts in it for the digestive system for detoxification and enzyme production, and it goes on and on and on. Therefore, what is referred to as the immune system cannot be enhanced without enhancing the overall health of the whole body in complete resistance to disease. With the above in mind, it becomes clear that a multifaceted approach must be made to stimulate and strengthen the diverse aspects of the body's major immune players, end quote. That's from John Courtney, Dr. Lee's right-hand man for 30 years. You think he knew something? And I, I've often given the example, if, you, if I said point to your nervous system, where would you point? Well, you might point to the brain. If I said point to your, uh, your digestive system, you might point to the lung. Point to your circulatory system, you might point to the heart. If I ask you to point to your immune system, where would you point? I mean, you could point to the entire body, the skin as well, because of the acid mantle of the skin for things that land on you that are constantly landing on you. Well, I think this is probably enough. I gave you a mid-podcast promotion of our um, symptom survey. At the very beginning, I told you all uh, barriers to getting in and ordering standard process directly on our website have been removed, which you can now do. Uh, there are great... Um, Great coupons, great benefits, great discounts by going through ForbiddenDoctor.com. But if you have a specific question or concern or something that keeps you up at night about something in your body that you don't understand, you need to take the symptom survey. And we offer it on the homepage at ForbiddenDoctor.com. It is the most comprehensive. Tons of questions. When you're done... Uh, by your request, you don't have to, but by your request, you can have a free 30-minute phone consult based on your results, and you'll be given a free personalized protocol for you, personalized to you based on the results of the symptom survey. And if you decide to purchase the recommended supplements, you can get them at a good discount if you sign up for our text blasts. These text blasts come out weekly. They give fantastic coupons, excuse me. You just text the word HEALTHY to 41411. Or you can call our office, 801-523-1890, and they can help you sign up for the text blast. And remember, it's your patronage, as I said earlier, of our offers that keeps this podcast on the air. And so, I will finish off with this. The statements that I have made in this podcast about specific products have not been evaluated by the U.S. Uh, Food and Drug Administration, and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All the information provided or any information contained on or in any product, label, or packaging, or this podcast is for informational purposes only, and it is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other health care professional. So thank you for listening to this forbidden information and our forbidden podcast. Mary will be here with me next time for another in-depth discussion of forbidden knowledge. We will see you then. 